Hello BHP, time for another installment of APB Dev Blog, wouldn't you say? So let's get to it. As you may already see, this update is brought to you as a vlog, a little different than the usual written blog, yeah? One could call this APB Dev Vlog. <laughs> Introducing RA Rock Trap. Rock Trap is an infantry only map without any structures, but don't tune out just yet as we're taking a different approach to its gameplay. Dan Paul 88. Domination Mode. The objective of the map is to capture and hold the control points that are scattered around the map. Doing so will grant you points and lead your team to victory. However, the control points also provide decent cover and are the only places where collectible crates spawn, so there's more to it than just making pretty numbers go up. A far cry from Luna's collect the tokens objective, which was very frequently ignored because of how inconsequential it was, how hard it was to notice the objective even exists, and how difficult it was to even find 10 tokens in a stringent 5 minute time limit. The map was actually first made 5 years ago by Cuddling, and testers from the pre-Gamma era may remember it being in a couple of Gamma pre-release builds, but back then it was just another deathmatch map. Since a lot of people were turned off by the gameplay of deathmatch maps present in Gamma's initial release, Rock Trap was never actually finished. In addition to implementing domination gameplay, Pushwall has ironed out a few issues with its terrain and applied more layers of foliage and props, bringing the map up to visual standards set by other redone maps like Guard Duty and Pacific Threat. The crate system has been tweaked too. No more character crates that lead to Team Tanyas versus Team Technicians, and no more cloaking crates that easily turn the Collector into an unkillable Rambo for the rest of the match, especially with no character crates risk losing the cloaking over. Limited ammo weapon crates and refill crates. They don't turn the tides nearly as much as Tanyas or Medics or Cloak Sniper Shotgunners. Still handy to have, particularly the Hyper C4. You may remember its destructive power was that of a nuclear explosion, although this has now been tweaked to produce a V2 rocket explosion. This is a significant nerf, it's still a powerful deterrent in a game mode that necessitates moving to very specific locations to acquire weapons and points, and a map rifle choke points and make it hard to get around a well-placed explosive charge. The graphical aspect of the game mode is incomplete right now. There's supposed to be a glowing allied Soviet insignia floating over own control points, but we don't have the animation properly rigged up yet. But the gameplay is working just fine, and on Rack Trap it's turning out to be a good deal more fun and engaging than Gamma's deathmatch maps. Notice the cave area and lush scenery, making for what is, in my opinion, a rather lovely looking map. On to the next map. New, and several would agree vastly improved, Ridge War. Now with less rain. My body's ready. Ugh, that was an awful burp, not even burp. Ridge War has been overhauled completely. Chopbam has made new terrain for it, which is much rockier, limiting ground units' movements and sight, but also making it easier for them to sneak around. Pushwall has finished up with props, foliage, more texture variations, and mountains on the map boundaries. A lot of the reviled features introduced in the latest public version are gone. There's no more rain, the fog is thinner, and the sun has risen again. The Tiberian sun has risen! Actually, it's done that quite a number of times, as the map is now set in the late winter. Theater that should be familiar to anyone who remembers the original Command & Conquer. As for the walls, well, they should be less of an annoyance this time around. Map boundaries have been caved in somewhat, so you can't get behind the bases anymore. While some of the walls from the last version are still present, most of them now serve as an indicator for where the edge of the battlefield is, and the rest of the wall segments aren't as exploitable as before since there's very little room for attackers to use them to lead defenders in circles. In previous Ridge War, you wanted your own walls dead as soon as possible so attackers had nothing to hide behind. Now you may be more inclined to leave the side walls intact to make it harder for enemy infantry teams and demolition trucks to sneak in. Back walls are indestructible, but since being outside of it means you're considered out of bounds, this is a non-issue. Despite the sharper cliffs, Soviets should not have even more of a hard time defending their base than before. Cliffs overlooking the barracks Tesla coil site are too rocky for vehicles to traverse, and a ladder near their barracks allows Soviet infantry to scale those cliffs in a timely fashion, not to mention more subtle and economical than using a Chinook. Shallow inclines behind the construction yard and ore field make it still feasible to get vehicles up the cliffs in a timely fashion. The construction yard is now covered by a SAM site on the roof and a flame tower at the top of the hill, so it's not quite as exposed as it was previously. In the forums, there's a bit of a buzz on the possibility of Soviet yaks and MiGs being included in APB. Rantan Plan shows us a video of this idea in action. Sounds, physics, coding, and scripting, Rantan Plan is putting in diligent work on this. Needless to say, this has caught the attention of several people. I would recommend to head over to the thread and track the progress on this, as well as to show your support for this. 
another community project has people talking. Kronos brings about the concept of an artificial intelligence learning and playing APB. The idea, as I come to understand it, is this combat AI will interact with APB as a human would through use of emulated keyboard and mouse events. Of course, don't fire questions towards me, because really, I don't know shit about this AI. We've had some recent organized games with good turnouts, but what is APB Game Night? Simply put, a date and time is set and we jump into the server for a good time. You should join us. Be on the lookout for announcements at the next game night, both here and on our social media. Or, just keep your eye on the launcher. And that just about wraps up this vlog. Thanks for tuning in. Find us in the book face in our Twitter. I mean, <laughs> our Facebook and Twitter. And oh hey, we also have an official Steam group. Keep up with planned events and announcements, shoot out friend requests, and play some games together with fellow APB fans. Now then, comment below, share with your friends, tell us what you think of this update, and stay tuned for more to come.